I was born and raised on the north shore of Oahu, in Hawaii, and you know, the son of Eddie Rothman. So I had a little bit of extra benefits there. But uh, all in all, I got into big wave surfing. You know, it was Derek Donner who took me under his wing in the beginning, and you know, seeing it in my eyes when you know the sport of towing surfing was pretty much created right outside of my house at backyards, Laird and. Buzzy and Derek, and uh, you know I was always a fat kid, you know, still not ripped, always little hemlock heavy set, and you know the bigger waves just pushed me easier. You know I wasn't the tail slide king as a kid, but I definitely was gonna you know, charge harder than the next kid. It was just it was just a little bit easier for me to surf bigger waves than it was the small ones. Yeah, well, Ruka was classic because a friend of mine, BJ Penn, well, we were sponsoring him from the Hui, and he said, hey, you know, I'm going to ride, I'm going to fight, but I'm going to fight for this other company, Ruka. I was like, oh, right on, that's cool. You know, we're stoked that I could help my friend and, you know, help support his career. And it came back full circle. You know, he introduced me to Pat Tonari. You know, the rest is history. You know, I'm Ruka family, and Pat's one of my best friends. He's like an advisor to me, and... Uh, to ride for that company and you know when people thought it wasn't gonna go very well you know Kai Garcia tell me oh don't sign with Ruka sign with Hurley go for the guaranteed and I said nothing in life is guaranteed bro besides we're gonna die just felt right riding for Ruka and being someone helping a brand grow you know now I have my own capsule and you know doing a lot of great things in 2016 yeah well music is part of my culture you know for me to spread the aloha around the world. I can't just do it in one aspect. You know, surfing and music go hand in hand. You know, my grandma taught me how to play the ukulele. And you know, I was fortunate enough to have people believe in my music and help me out. And now I'm starting to work on my second album. And uh, it's great, it's so good to be able to share music with the world, you know. What would the world be without music? It'd be a pretty shitty place. <laughs> Kua, Kai, Roth, and hung up off the top. Can he drop into this thing? Oh my goodness, oh. what's he doing? 2015 was a special year for me. I was just a wild card. Gary Linden didn't think I should have been there, and Pete Mill gave me the opportunity, and the WSL gave me a chance, you know, so I really thank the WSL and Peter Mill ultimately for giving me those chances in those certain events, and those are the events that ran, and I won one at second and one. Won my first world title, and this year I, I feel in my heart I should be the world champion again. Things didn't go my way, and a lot of people seen it differently. You know, a lot of people seen it how I seen it in Toro Santos, and uh, there was an apology there. But hey, life goes on. You know, being number two in the world ain't that bad. It's just gonna make me more hungry and more determined to win a few more world titles. You know, I'm planning on staying on tour. It keeps me young. It keeps me focused. It keeps me knowing I have something to work for every year, you know, and, and to work for a world title, you know, no matter what it's in or how many events are run, you know, to be a world champion, it, you know, it takes a lot. Yeah, this winter has been historical. I mean, when I was younger, the waves were always big, you know, all the time, and there was a few years there where it kind of had a few swells here and there that were, oh, these are big swells, where these are giant swells that came, and this was a real North Shore winter. This is what I was used to seeing as a kid and you know, watching and you know the paddling aspect is, is huge you know guys are paddling bigger and bigger and more massive waves but you know there comes a point I think where paddling is almost holding surfing back a little bit you know guys get paddle yeah get to the bottom and get smoked 90 percent of the good waves go unridden or someone just gets to the bottom and gets pounded. It's been a while since there was waves big enough to show that paddling is not the way to go when it's too big and get back on your tow board. You know, because the mentality that people have with the paddling in, imagine that on a tow board at 80 foot jaws, coming in and doing a huge reel off the top on 80 foot, pulling in and coming out and doing a huge gouge again. You know, that's progressive surfing to me and I'm happy that, you know, the waves have showed that there's a level of surfing where the tow in is where it's at. And you know, a lot of waves went by on a few swells that nobody caught. 
It almost seemed like waste to me. You know, towing, once it gets massive, I mean, what do you do when it's too big to paddle? And it will get too big to paddle. You know what I mean? Sometimes waves are just that big. I mean, you're not going to paddle in it in Tahiti when it's 20 foot. I guarantee you that. Somebody could try. I don't think they'll be very successful. You know, some waves like the right or a few other venues, you know, why not? You know, shippies, shippies could be paddling and when it's too big, you got to jump on your tow board, right? So I would love to see a few slabs or, a, you know, one or two towing in venues on the tour it would be amazing. You know, and even throw maybe one stand-up paddle one in there. Who knows? Uh, you know, big wave surfing is big wave surfing, whether you're paddling in, stand-up paddling, or towing in. If you're on a massive wave, you're on a massive wave, and however you got on there is right on. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what's so funny is I thought the season was over and, you know, things were calming down. So I started taking some time off and lo and behold, the eddy comes around <laughs> and it's massive as it gets. So, uh, you know, we train for life. You know, this is a way of life for, for me. And my training program is just for me to survive whatever happens and whatever is the next thing that comes my way. Um, there's a lot of guys that are coming into surfing try and catch one wave and win the Billabong XXL and all of a sudden they're a big wave surfer, but that's where they go wrong right there. You know, there's not, no such thing as just a big wave surfer. You know, it's a, it's a waterman. It's an ocean lifestyle. And it's, a, it's what I live for. It's who I am. It's in my blood and it's who I'll always be. My Eddie Wipeout, that, uh, that was a good one. I, I was going, you know, I was deeper. I was in the spot. And next thing I know, I was upside down and Kala was going over the falls on a 25-foot wave. And my little brother shoulder hopped us on the end. You know, everybody was charging. My brother, you know, my brother sets the bar for me. I got to keep up with him. He's young, you know, and he's charging harder than 95% of the world right now. And, you know, to have a brother like that, it's cool to be the next generation of brothers in the Eddie Aikau. Kala just got in my way. I don't know what to say about that, you know, because, you know, with that wave, I could have won that. I needed one more wave, and that could have been my wave. But, you know, no excuses. You're not going to say, oh, we could have won the Super Bowl if the guy didn't push me down off the line or, you know, if the guy didn't block me at the NRL finals. But uh, see, is what it is. Uh, it was a gnarly wipeout. Kala went over the falls head first, so <laughs> I was happy about that. <laughs> But all in all, everybody got, was safe. You know, that was the main thing because Kala is like a brother to me and I, you know, I really love him. And we're just charging. And sometimes when you charge, you got your blinders on, you don't see things, and that's what happens. I'm ready to put up a challenge to all these people around the world, and you guys will be the first to hear it, that uh, I want to see some users' photos or some of these, you know, Instagram to show us what you think is the biggest wave and we'll come down there and try and ride it. So that, that'd be amazing. And I wanna try and, I wanna try and put that up, put that out there to the world to, you know, you guys know a spot, you've seen something that's massive, let us know. And we'll take whoever it is that shows us the wave down there with us to surf it.